Hi, my name is Brian Monroe, and the book that I read for the iMovie project was She Loved Baseball, The Effa Manley Story by Audrey Vernick. To summarize, Effa always loved baseball. As a young woman, she would go to Yankee Stadium just to see Babe Ruth's mighty swing, but she never dreamed she would someday own a baseball team or be the first and only woman ever inducted into the Hall of Baseball Hall of Fame. From her childhood in Philadelphia to her groundbreaking role as business manager and owner of the Newark Eagles, Effa Manley always fought for what was right, and she always struck, swung for the fences. To spark students' interest, before they read the story, I will show them a YouTube video that has highlights of different players th during the Negro League Baseball times. If I'm trying to find out what my students know about the Negro Leagues, I might have them conduct a fast write. My during reading strategy involves teacher read aloud. Students will follow along and listen to the teacher as she models what they're reading. As an after reading activity, students are encouraged to make a story map. A story map outlines one, who the characters are, two, where the story took place, three, the main events of the story, and four, how the story finished. She Loved Baseball, The Effa Manley Story, written by Audrey Vernick and illustrated by Don Tate. When she was in first grade, Effa Brooks was called to the principal's office. Young lady, the principal said, her voice hard and mean, why must you play with those Negroes in the schoolyard? Those Negroes were Effa's brothers and sisters. While Effa's skin was light like her mother's, her siblings were dark like their father. People with dark skin couldn't eat in certain restaurants or swim in public pools. Now it seemed they couldn't play with their sister either. That's just the way things are, people said, but it never made sense to Effa. As Effa grew up in Philadelphia in the early 1900s, America grew up too. Bold new music, jazz, blared, and folks stepped out in strange new shoes called sneakers. Hmm, was Philadelphia the birthplace of jazz? After high school, Effa moved to New York City, which seemed like the perfect place to live the big life she dreamed of. Everyone there, everyone was talking about Babe Ruth, the Yankees' new slugging sensation. Effa went to games just to see his mighty swing. Nothing prepared her for the crackling energy of the 1932 World Series at Yankee Stadium. New York was beating the Chicago Cubs and the crowd roared its approval. In that swirl of excitement, Effa met a kind, fun-loving man, Abe Manley. Abe adored baseball. He soon adored Effa, too. He would take Effa out on the town in Harlem, a bustling black neighborhood in New York City. But something in Harlem really bothered Effa. Even in black communities, most businesses were owned by white people, and black people were not hired for most jobs. That's just the way things are, people said. But Effa knew it wasn't right. The way things are, that seems like a common theme in this story. What predictions can you make? She organized the Citizens League for Fair Play, a group of community leaders. They urged Harlem's largest department store to hire black sales clerks. The owner said no. Nobody believed a group of black people could change a white businessman's mind, but the League fought anyway. For weeks they marched the street carrying signs that said, Don't buy where you can't work. I wonder how the white businessmen responded to their actions. What do you think they did? They convinced their neighbors to shop elsewhere. The store lost money, but still no black sales clerks. The league kept marching. Finally, they won. Newspapers reported the boycott's success. Effa proudly placed the articles in her scrapbook. Before long, hundreds of black people were working in stores throughout Harlem. What an accomplishment for Effa. The world of baseball was headed for change too. Abe and Effa married in 1935 and started a team, the Brooklyn Eagles, in the new Negro Le National League that Abe had helped establish. Abe took the team south for spring training, but there was much to do in Brooklyn, organizing schedules, ordering equipment, arranging transportation. 
Effa had never done work like that before, but the more she did, the more she enjoyed it. By the time the Eagles moved to New Jersey in 1936, Effa was handling almost all the team's business. The city of Newark welcomed the Eagles. There was nothing more thrilling than a ball game at Ruppert Field. The hot, sweet and salty summer smells, the crack of the bat, People in their finest clothes standing, a few at first, willing the ball to keep going. Then everyone at once, the thunderous cheer, the roar echoing blocks away. When first baseman Mule Suttles came to bat, the crowd chanted, Kick Mule! Hoping to see his high-stepping home run swing. God, it's like I'm almost there. Monte Irvin had one of the most magnificent arms that's ever been in baseball, Effa said. He was also an amazing shortstop. Irvin and power-hitting second baseman Larry Doby were one of the best double-play combinations ever. Then there was Leon Day. He played every place on the field except catcher, Effa said. I don't mean he filled in. He played them. In broiling summer heat, Day would pitch the first game of a doubleheader, then trot out to play the outfield for the second. Wow, do you think you could do that? When Effa attended league meetings, other owners protested. Baseball's no place for a woman. But over time, they came to respect her because she understood business and she understood baseball. Many owners only wanted to make money for their teams, but Effa cared about hers. She bought the best uniforms in a fancy, comfortable bus. She encouraged players to be active in the community and found them off-season jobs playing ball in Puerto Rico. Her players called her their mother hen. The Eagles had talent and skill, but for years, they were only second best. There was no beating the Kansas City Monarchs. In 1946, they got their chance. It all came down to one final Negro League World Series game. The best view was from the press box, but Effa sat in the stands, where the seats vibrated from foot-stomping excitement. Newark had a one-run lead going into the final inning. With two outs, the Monarchs had two men on base, and Effa couldn't watch. She heard the crushing thwack of the bat hitting the ball and waited for one awful second. Was it? Say it wasn't. A home run? The newer crowd was cheering. Effa peeked through her fingers. The first baseman had made the catch. The Eagles were world champions and it was Effa's proudest moment. The next year, Jackie Robinson joined the Brooklyn Dodgers, the first black player in the major leagues. So many people, not just baseball fans, were proud and hopeful about change and equality in America. Many black Americans became Dodger fans that year. Unfortunately, this meant the Negro Leagues lost fans and also started losing their best players without even getting paid for them. Some major league owners didn't know the Negro League players had contracts, others didn't care. When Branch Rickey, general manager of the Brooklyn Dodgers, signed Don Newcomby, in 1945, the Eagles lost an important player and received nothing in return. Effa was glad to see her players get their big break, but she believed all teams, not just white ones, should be paid for their players. She talked to the press and made people think about how unfair it was. Instead of saying, that's just the way things are, some began to ask, but why? So when Cleveland Indians owner Bill Veet became interested in Larry Doby, he was ready to negotiate. In July 1947, he paid the Eagles $15,000, and Doby became the first black player in the American League. Effa was losing another great player, but she wished him well. She told him, Doby, keep hitting the ball out of the park. He did. After that, the Major League team owners always paid Negro League teams for their players. But more and more players left, and soon Negro League ball came to an end. In 1952, Abe became ill and died. Effa lost her best friend, business partner, and truest love all at once. She often looked at her scrapbook to remind her of good times. As she browsed through those pages, something kept nagging at her. The history of the Negro Leagues was slipping away. That's just the way things are, people said. But it broke Effa's heart. Have you ever watched something that you love so much slip away? In the 1970s, she began a letter writing campaign to convince the National Baseball Hall of Fame to acknowledge the best Negro League players. 
The Hall had honored some who had also played in the majors, such as Jackie Robinson in 1962, but none who had played their entire career in the Negro Leagues. When the Hall appointed a committee to consider honoring Negro League stars, Ethel was thrilled. Between 1971 and 1977, the committee voted to induct nine Negro League players, including former Eagle star Monte Irvin. Then it announced it had completed its work. Ethel was outraged. She could name dozens more who deserved the honor, especially two Eagles, slugger Mule Suttles and Biz Mackey, who had managed the 1946 championship team. She continued writing the hall until she died in 1981. What do you think Effa's greatest accomplishment was? The hall wasn't finished with Negro League players after all. Over the years, more of Effa's favorites were inducted, but many, including Suttles and Mackey, were not. It wasn't right. It was just the way things were. Until 2006. On July 30th, Suttles and Mackey and 10 other Negro League players were finally inducted into the Hall of Fame. Ethel would have been so proud. Something else happened that day. Something amazing. Ethel was inducted along with them. In baseball's long history, Ethel Manley was the first woman ever to be so honored. She was recognized for all she did for her players, for her civil rights work, and for getting the major leagues to treat Negro League teams with respect. On Effa's gravestone, it says, she loved baseball. In 2006, baseball proved it loved her back. The end. I hope that you enjoyed She Loved Baseball, the Effa Manley story. I know I did. Be sure to check out more books by Audrey Vernick.